Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like we've got ourselves a bout of information that has sent the markets down into turmoil. More importantly, Bitcoin. Bitcoin now testing a critical point in the chart, and we're going to get straight to that. Listen, the marketplace is now coming to terms with the idea that things aren't looking good. It starts to become a reoccurring story, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? This is what needs to happen. The Fed is suggesting higher interest rates, very hawkish, which means that they are going to execute the best practice to make sure that inflation stays down or try and get it down towards that 2% mark. 6% on interest rates? Mm, that's not looking good, ladies and gentlemen. And is that going to be the terminal rate? Well, we're going to know very soon when the federal funds rate actually is released. Now, we've had some information today. The weekly jobless claims came in at above 200,000, which suggests to us that more people are out of work and claiming benefit. That's good news right now. Why? Because then it means that the Fed can see a scope that people are claiming benefit, which means that they're not spending money. However, this is the highest reading since January. And tomorrow we have the non-farm payrolls and the market is just coming to terms with everything and everything is pulling back. Not as aggressively as Bitcoin, but the market is getting ready for tomorrow. Now, if you are new to the channel, you know what the flavor is. Hit the like button. And if you like what you're hearing and you're seeing and watching, make sure you hit the subscribe so you can tune in to us when we do the New York live streams, which we do need to have a conversation about regarding today's price action. So let's get with the flavor. As you can see, Bitcoin has taken a little bit of a tumble. Let me just get rid of this bad boy. Here we go. Bitcoin breaks the key 800 EMA on the four hour time frame. It's a very fast move to the downside. Of course, this is on the speculation regarding Silvergate, the marketplace itself. You can see weekly claims rose above 200,000 for the first time in since January. More importantly, the Friday data on payrolls is going to be a market mover. Scrolling down a little bit more, we can see that they've mentioned here cryptocurrency slid with Bitcoin on the idea that Silvergate itself collapsed overnight under the scrutiny of Washington because of their practices with the involvement of FTX. So what have we got? $3.29. This bad boy is just going down and they are just getting rid of this stock. And that is it. They're shutting up shop from $235 a share all the way down to $3.29. Sad story. But with that being said, we've got the S&P itself. Word on the street is it could drop as much as 20% according to JP Morgan. Now, JP Morgan likes to throw a couple of things suggesting it's going to go up, it's going to go down. But this is according to technical analysts in JP Morgan. Because of the hawkish stance by Powell himself, the marketplace is now starting to react and come to terms with the fact that things ain't looking too good. We go back into the chart itself and we have a look at the two-year yield. Roll down. Here we go. Two-year yield came up to a high today at 5.08%. That's not good, but it's still within this high region right here. Now, a lot of investors are getting concerned with the fact that the two-year is still aggressively high. We roll onto the 10-year yield. We see the same thing. Still stuck in that around that 4% region itself. Now, if we go over to the NASDAQ itself, you can see NASDAQ hasn't welcomed what's going on today. And we're going to now break down the chart and discuss how Bitcoin today trapped everyone, how the NASDAQ trapped everyone today. So let me draw your attention to today's New York live stream. We obviously had a new participant in the live stream, which happened to be my soft light, um, the soft lamp and invading my space, but it kind of gave us a little bit of a triangular projection. Has the hybrid system evolved? Jokes aside, during this time in the actual live stream itself, we were talking about the liquidity that was coming in to the book map. We made sense of that by going over to the high block itself. 21,000 was the key zone for Bitcoin in terms of whole and half numbers. At that point, you can see earlier on, we had around $695 million worth of long liquidations at the 21,300 region. How could we have understood that they were going to make their way back towards this zone? Well, firstly, we need to go back to the New York live stream where we witnessed Mr. Market Maker getting price ready for what was about to come. You can see in the book map, the liquidity was flirtuous inside of this zone where commitment was coming in. And as you can see ever so slightly, the red order block right there. Now that was a spoof. It was an order that was placed to induce traders. However, it got canceled, but got replaced yet again. Now this is the thing about the book map. It provides false signals, okay? 
But when you focus on the profile itself, you want to focus on the orders that are static. They do change frequently, but when you see orders like 600 Bitcoin, 700 Bitcoin, and price of Bitcoin was going down or up, as long as those figures remain, it's showing us that there is interest for prices to get filled at that point. Now, with that being said, look at the green vector candle that appeared on Bitcoin at the start of the New York session. Mr. Market Maker gave us a clue as to what was going to happen. Why? Whenever you witness a green vector candle like this one appearing in the chart, if it doesn't get recovered straight away, it suggests to us that Mr. Market Maker is starting a trap. Notice how Bitcoin starts to make the move back up and goes above the key zones that we marked off in the live stream. They came back into the vector candle recovery point, as you can see at the top of the chart right here. Whenever they hit this zone or a zone like this, that is where Mr. Market Maker has completed his longs and realized a return on his investment. Why? Because he's manipulated the chart. He's made traders believe in this area over here that price was going down and the shorts needed to be triggered. You can't sell short if no one is there buying. Now, Mr. Market Maker consolidated, brought price even lower, trapped even more traders, recovered the first wick, recovered the second wick. He then finalizes and recovers this week where he started the move to the upside with this green candlestick here. First green vector candle that appears above the 50 EMA shifting to the upside. If you realize the return on that move, happy days. But when you realize price is coming up to a vector candle zone and starts to stall, that is when you realize that Mr. Market Maker has hit a pool of liquidity, which is shown up here. And then he's likely to reverse. Remember, the bigger picture is coming into play right now. The yields are going up. The market is anticipating more data that's coming out tomorrow. There's a short-term interest in rallies that happen in bearish markets. It's just a quick way to mark up price to sell it off again. Notice how Bitcoin then does come back down into the green vector candle and completely annihilates the zone and continuously just rips down even lower. Now, is it because of Silvergate or people just sick and tired of this madness and they're thinking, you know what? Forget it. We're going to dump it. Let's go into the four hour time frame and understand something. The four hour time frame shows Bitcoin has broken down beyond the 800 EMA and it looks like it's going to build mo more momentum to try and work down even more. This zone right here was the hopeful zone for the retail trader, which is where price today moved away from. Why? Because traders would look at this and think it's a support zone. Happy days. Market maker gave people that impression. Go into the five minute time frame and you see bright as day. That's what he did inside of this area right here. But remember, the bigger picture is Bitcoin's going down. Now, if we go back into the four hour time frame and we consider Bitcoin in terms of cycles, you can see that Bitcoin is now at the M level formation. M, drop level one, retrace, drop level two, retrace, drop level three. Now, principally, we would expect a little bit of a recovery here, but this move is motivated by news. That's the problem. So Bitcoin could continue down even lower. And if he doesn't find any support inside of this zone right here, which we marked off in last night's video, Bitcoin's going to have a bit of a problem working its way all the way down towards those key critical zones that it moved away from. It happens to be the vector candle recovery regions. Looking at other assets across the board, we see Euro is drifting upwards and it hasn't actually dropped down aggressively. The dominance of the dollar itself is holding out pretty well, but we anticipated a drop in the dollar. But it's holding at that key 800 EMA on the four hour time frame. What is this telling us? Could they be preparing to run up price? Because you've got to remember, tomorrow we have the non-farm payrolls coming out. Here we have it. Tonight, Japan is going to be running their press conference. More importantly, the unemployment rate for Canada. And then, of course, the average hourly earnings and the non-farm payrolls. This is going to be a market mover. If the data today is suggesting that 211,000 people claimed benefit, would we be of the assumption that the market is going to witness average hourly earnings coming down, non-farm employment change coming down as well, so not many people are in work? And then, of course, the unemployment rate moving up. That would be a great story now, wouldn't it? Then that would be consistent with witnessing the charts like dollar coming down to recover these vector zones right here in the chart. Green vector. That would then be consistent with the NASDAQ itself. Let's roll up NASDAQ. Here we go. 
That will be consistent with NASDAQ coming up and coming, going back into this red vector candle zone. And then, of course, this final vector candle region right here, solidifying that notion. Because remember, if people are out of work and the unemployment rate does go up, the market will then say, oh, thank God. Maybe we don't have to increase interest rates so aggressively. But the yields are still causing a problem. Going over to the yields themselves, you can see the two-year yield has started to come back after hitting that 5.091% zone. It's in treacherous areas. The inversion yield itself is at wild zones. This is not normal, ladies and gentlemen. The market shouldn't be doing this. You can't earn more money for a shorter period of time. That's what happens in a casino. You double up on a roulette or you're playing poker, whatever. Not when it comes to the treasury yields or the bonds, okay? Looking at the bonds themselves, we can see that the bonds have tried to move up, but they're still trading at very low points. Tomorrow's data will be the nail in the coffin as to whether or not the Fed is going to get it right in terms of increasing interest rates. But even if the unemployment data does come out tomorrow and does suggest that people are losing their jobs and that there is going to be a shortfall of work, then the Fed is not going to backtrack on its goal of getting inflation down to 2%. It still needs to increase interest rates. Why? Because inflation is still sticky. All we've had nonstop since January is this booming hot labor market. All right. Now there's going to be a fall from that. We need to see inflation come down. But if people have been spending their money, which is going to be the next event that we're waiting for coming out next week, which is the CPI data on inflation, if that even shows that inflation is starting to go up, go, go up, or the core price index does show that prices for goods and services are going to start going up, then the market, if it does retrace, it's going to collapse even more. Going back into Bitcoin and what we can anticipate later on this evening. Now, given that Asia has, well, we do have a little bit of time before Asia does actually open. But Bitcoin's movement right now could be replicating what it done last week. So we would naturally anticipate a little bit of a retrace, but it's down to how Asia is going to react to the Silvergate story and the overall bigger picture in the marketplace. Now, when we look at the chart, we then say to ourselves, well, let's just put things into perspective. We've got this M formation up here, okay? Remember, this is the cyclical move that we look for every time we come to the charts. W formation, rise up, retrace, rise up, retrace, M formation, drop level one, drop level two, drop level three, peak formation, happy days. So we then take that principle, mark it over to the chart itself, and we can see that we are in a cyclical move to the downside. We expect some movement here, or at least a little bit of a retrace, because everyone has been shaken out on their longs. If we go back into the high block and look on the seven hour, the seven day chart itself, we can see bright as day that Bitcoin <laughs> is on its way towards that 20,200, looking for that liquidity of $6 billion. It's a sad story right there. Now, let me show you something. I made this projection to the pattern watchers in the, in the Patreon for the market makers. And this was the logic of how you can utilize the hybrid system to project price on where you anticipate it to go. Now, remember, we are in a bearish market. So this rally to the upside can only be sustained for a certain period of time. As we were approaching these news announcements that were due to come out, I came to the understanding that I needed to anticipate that Bitcoin was likely to come down and test these two high volume nodes in the chart because these two high volume nodes right here were points in the in of interest in the chart, which would suggest to me that the same guys inside of this zone over here, if you can see it, the same guys here would actually start stepping in if price was going to get to that zone. That's where we are in essence right now. We want to see if the same guys are going to come in again at this point. Is the market maker going to trap traders again at that point and make them believe that Bitcoin is going to go higher from that point? Or is the news too much for the marketplace or Bitcoin to then end up seeing it collapse to the downside even more and fully recovering the vectors? But let me draw your attention to this. Having an awareness of the red vector candle needs to appear here. This zone right here is where we anticipate the shift from one zone to the next. You can see that there is a structure here. Some of you might look at it and say, yeah, that looks like a head and shoulders pattern. You're right. It probably is a head and shoulders pattern. We then go back into the chart itself for Bitcoin and we can see it forms that structure. And then when we take the actual red vector candle zone that we needed to see, 
red vector candle needs to appear here inside of this zone where the price is at 22,939. We go to Bitcoin and we pull up the 22,939 and that will take us roughly right towards that point right there. Happy days. And that's where the red vector candle needed to appear to make us understand that Bitcoin was likely to continue even lower to test the vector candle zone in the chart. So happy days on that projection. It played out. From that point, it actually came above the 200 EMA. If we look in the chart, it came above the 200 EMA retrace continuation to the downside. Now we're waiting for that narrative and Bitcoin is starting to move down even lower. So I better get this video out to you. So with that being said, guys, it has been a bit of a volatile day in the marketplace. Now, tomorrow we have the non-farm payrolls coming out. Now, if the data that comes out tomorrow is anything like the one that came out today, then naturally we would want to see the marketplace come back up. But is one reading on the unemployment claims enough to make the market shoot back up? Even if the market does move back up, it's going to be short-lived because they were not taking away the idea that the Fed is going to be very hawkish and it's going to increase these interest rates. Ladies and gentlemen, mad love and respect. Thank you, for very Thank you very much for passing through to today's New York live stream. I won't be going live tomorrow, but we'll still be doing a video to update you on what has happened and unfolded throughout the day. Take care of yourselves, gang. If you want to learn more about the hybrid system, get over to tradersreality.com where you can download everything and all the access to the hybrid system indicators. And you want to learn more about the hybrid and get these sort of projections, check out the Patreon. Have yourselves a good evening, guys. Take care of yourselves. Peace.